Hi everybody, you're watching The Sit Down, I'm DJ Sexsmith. First time I can say we've had a filmmaker and a therapist here with us, Orna Garalnik, Josh Kriegman. Guys, how are you? Thank you. Very nice to meet you. Good to be Glad here. So a couple's therapy coming out on Showtime on Friday. So Orna, this is your everyday life in terms of meeting with people. Josh, mm -hmm. you give us an opportunity to see it. How did you guys first meet and how did this all come together? Yeah, so in terms of where the idea for the series came from, um, both of my parents are therapists, mm -hmm. so I grew up uh, pretty familiar with the language of therapy and kind of immersed in that world and hearing all kinds of stories from them about the kinds of, you know, extraordinary things that can happen in a therapist's office, the transformations and breakthroughs and struggles. And so uh, on the filmmaking side, I and Elise Steinberg and Eli Dupre, we've been thinking about how, you know, is it possible to actually capture therapy and what goes on in the therapist's office in a way that preserves the authenticity of it? Um, could people be open and real and vulnerable while also knowing that they're being filmed? So that's something that we have been thinking about for a long time and we were really excited to get this opportunity to find out. Mm. Um, and then we, uh, in making the, the, putting the series together, we reached out to a lot of therapists. Um, we're in New York City, so there were a lot of therapists to talk to. Yeah, yeah. Um, and meeting Orna, it was just very clear from the get-go as soon as we started talking that we are uh, kind of kindred spirits and shared a real vision for what this could be. So Orna, when you met Josh and everybody else, what kind of connection did you guys have and why did you think this made sense? Well, I, that w believe me, it was not my plan. Mm. I, I'm in this kind of business where we sit back and we're very much not in the public eye. But um, speaking to Elise and speaking to Josh, they managed to kind of spark this excitement about this project, which is to manage to share with a wider audience something that we usually keep very private and something that I have a lot of passion about, which is the kind of work I do. And I thought, wow, this would be an amazing opportunity to share something that is usually so hidden and so magnificent, actually, which is the work we do in our private rooms with a wider audience. Absolutely. It yeah. seemed like amazing. And it's really interesting because people are coming in and they're very vulnerable. But for you, like putting this out on display, I'm sure you were vulnerable and just exposing everything. So yeah. what was it like for you to accept this? And, and Josh was telling me off camera, like camera's going to be hidden. Like we don't want to change anything in therapy. But I'm sure you still had some reservations at first. So how did you get over those? I had um, my first reservations were just because this is a very different thing than what you do in regular therapy, which they're like very intense um, boundaries or there's a very intense frame around confidentiality and privacy. So the first thing was to just like realize that we're doing something very different because we're all suspending that, like both the participants and myself were just suspending something that I'm so used to. Mm -hmm. um, so that was like a first shift um, and I didn't know if it's going to work. I mean, all of us didn't know if it's mm -hmm. going to work. We were just like experimenting. And then uh, we started doing it and realized, man, it's like the same thing. I mean, the work is the work is the work. And the cameras kind of very quickly recede to the background and we were just doing the work. So it was pretty astounding yeah. to realize that it happens that way. It's, it's very real. I mean, these are these are real people, um, and we worked hard to find real people who are genuinely struggling with crises in their relationships and sincerely looking for, for help and, and wanting to actually do real therapy. Um, and, and on the filmmaking side, we, we worked hard to create a space where everyone always knew that they were being filmed. Uh, that was understood from the beginning, but it, didn't, it wasn't a distraction. There weren't cameras in the room. There weren't other people in the room. We knew that we had to get out of the way in order to, to to let it unfold. So we had cameras behind uh, one-way mirrors and we created a space where th uh, couples could come in, sit in the waiting room, do an hour of therapy with Orna and leave and never interact with the production or see cameras or anything like that. So I think that that helped to create an opportunity to actually be real. Yeah, just to keep it organic still and not mm -hmm. change yeah. anything. And That's I think right. it's really interesting because you grew up with therapists as parents. You've obviously done this for a long time, but mm -hmm. still, for the amount of time that you guys shot this, like there was a lot of different therapy sessions that you watched and listened to. So for both of you guys, what was most fascinating about the different couples that came through and what they exposed and talked about? I mean, there's a lot uh, that people work through in this series. And I mean, part of what, what's exciting about it is that it's very relatable, right? These are, these are real people with real issues, and they 
and it feels very, I think, familiar. I think it will feel familiar to people watching. Um, we see ourselves in them. We may not be going through exactly the same things, but we, we recognize common dynamics that are, in fact, universal and, and human um, between all of us. And so this is a diverse group of people, diverse in background in terms of where they come from, um, and very diverse in issues. Uh, I mean, they, they wrestle with all kinds of things from uh, sexual incompatibility to uh, one couple uh, is having conflict over when to have a child. Uh, there's trust issues and suspicions of cheating and just all kinds of um, really deep work that we get to um, share and witness. Mm -hmm. And it seems like trust is one of the biggest things when it comes to relationships. So for you, I'm sure that's something that comes up a lot. Yeah. What's it like unpacking that with people and if they don't trust each other to get them to trust each other once again? Well, trust is, is uh, um, a very common manifestation of the kind of grooves or patterns that couples tend to get stuck in. They tend to repeat similar patterns, what we call in jargon, repetition compulsion. Mm. So um, the work of unpacking that is basically to get people to use the fact that they're sitting, that they're living with an other person, and other I mean with a capital O, and through kind of shifting their identification out of their own seat, their own shoes, and understanding the perspective of another, they get to see from the outside, from sort of a third perspective, how they get entrenched in these patterns. That's the basic of the work. So trust can be one of them. So realizing when one person is, let's say one person is withdrawing a lot or concealing information, they're going to be stoking mistrust in the other. Mm. So to get a couple to see that they're enacting a certain pattern or dance is a good example of how this works. Just being able to see outside of yourself too, yeah. because I think some of us yeah. can be so focused on our own life, our own stuff, you're missing everything else going on. So having mm -hmm. that time to kind of air it out and also just having this show too, because like I told you guys, like I'll watch this with my fiance, like we'll be able right. to talk about our stuff and yeah. even just living in a culture where we can talk about therapy because I don't know, it feels like a couple of years ago we weren't having these same conversations. So there is still that stigma with mental health, but when do you guys feel like the whole therapy conversation kind of shifted to say like, hey, it's okay to talk about it and it's okay to go and, and work your stuff out? What right. do you think? When did it shift? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'm a good person to ask because that's what I do. Right. So from my perspective, I'm like, what do you it's mean? Everyone does it. Right. Well, you know, that's what we do. <laughs> How else do you right. think about things? So. What about for you, Josh? Well, I mean, similarly, like, you know, I, like right, I, it's been like your I said, world I grew too. up in this yeah. world. I, I do think that we, you know, this is part of the hope for the series is that it does inspire this kind of conversation and, and reflection. And one of the things that um, I think is just true about, maybe this is more true about our culture now, but, you know, couples often suffer in isolation and a kind of loneliness, mm -hmm. right? There's issues that we go through and we kind of sometimes tend to think that they're our own and we don't talk openly much about what's really going on and there's a kind of taboo against even acknowledging that relationships are a tremendous amount of work and can often require a lot of conflict yeah. um, and working through conflict. And so this is an opportunity to, to really recognize that these struggles are universal and they're human. And, and there is, I think, real value in, in finding these points of connection and feeling less alone. Yeah, and that conflicts are okay. Like that, it's yeah. part of the journey. You know, yeah. I think for a lot of people, there's a misconception like you shouldn't fight with your spouse. You sh you shouldn't have any conflict. But at the same time, you work a lot of stuff out. So, mm -hmm. what are some big misconceptions about relationship building, about trust, just about some of the things that you deal with in therapy? What are things that people tend to think one way, but it's actually quite the opposite? Well, to to go back to something you just said, I mean, it's couples do have to go through a lot of conflict. That is part of the journey. And one of the reasons I think this show is so, in a way, radical and important is that we kind of break through the taboo or the firewall around those processes that every couple has to go through. Mm -hmm. And we're like, look at this. This is happening. It's happening to all of us. You can identify with these people. You will learn to love them. Um, they are us. So, I mean, that, I think, is key to this show. But in terms of, like, what are the main issues that people actually struggle with, um, I'd say it's a combination of, first of all, in a way, figuring out sort of the politics of one's couplehood, like how do you neg negotiate difference? Right. 
Um, how do you negotiate living with an other? Like, how do you do that? I mean, people do a few different things. Um, and then wrestling with how the past, mm -hmm. each person comes with their own past, their own histories of trauma, histories of attachment, histories of how you're supposed to resolve conflict, and then sitting with another and seeing how that's inflecting your current life. Yeah, that's really interesting because you come from two different perspectives, two mm -hmm. different pasts, and then you're both trying to solve problems together, and one person's doing it one way, one person's doing it the other way, totally. and that's where you run into issues yeah. until yeah. you start to understand each other. And even still, like you mentioned the past, like you can go through life, you can change, but at the same time, your past is just going to keep tugging along. And I'm sure with the couples here, we're going to see that as well, which is always something that you struggle with, it feels like, in a relationship. Yeah, that's a... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Yes. Right. <laughs> it's a major, it's a major theme, and it comes through, I think, in a in a way, uh, especially with 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 one particular couple in the series. Uh, it comes through in a way that I think really resonates and feels very profound. You know, mm -hmm. recognizing, you know, and this is you know, the, with the help of of Orna and recognizing how the the past really casts a shadow mm -hmm. uh, over the present, um, and we all do that to one degree or another. We all carry baggage. We all have histories of experience from childhood or the past in general and often sometimes we know about it and sometimes we really don't and that's what can be really extraordinary about the process is discovering the ways that uh, our past continues to to uh, mm -hmm. impact us and you mentioned process and this is a docu-series this will be a long runway for people to check this out mm -hmm. yeah. what went into that decision to break it out like that and why was it important to have nine separate episodes to really digest all this stuff going well, on? Well, I have to say that one of the reasons that um, Josh and Elisa's concept appealed to me is because they came into it already knowing that therapy is not kind of a quick fix, right. but it's a long and subtle process. So that was their concept from mm -hmm. the get-go, which was appealing to me yeah, that sure they're it was great like. For you. Yeah, it's not kind of, you know, a clickbait or kind like of... like a running gun type of thing. We're in, we're out. It's like, no, we need time right. to let this we thing breathe. We need time. We're mm -hmm. gonna, we are going to really respect the process and, and the subtlety of how it unfolds. So... Well, and this was also core to the vision for how, you know, this, this question was, was present for us from the beginning. Is it, is it possible to let it unfold the way it naturally would um, and still have compelling things happen? And you know, one of the ways that we knew we wanted to do that was to really step back and to not, you know, w when you're trying to do things quickly in, in a sort of filmmaking world, you know, there's pressure to interfere and, and, and push or manipulate, and we absolutely didn't want to do anything like that. This is, uh, we really wanted to steer away from any kind of sensationalism or salaciousness or any manipulation whatsoever. So it was important to create the space where this could happen and then make sure there was enough time for something to happen. And there's a lot of faith in yeah. the process. Okay. You know, like we really believed that if we could manage to figure out how to create the right space, something extraordinary would happen, and it did. I think it's awesome yeah. you guys let it happen that way. Yeah. What was the biggest surprise along the way for both of you? It's a good question. I think, I mean, I don't know if this is a surprise, but along similar lines, you know, we weren't sure it would work, yeah. right? So it was, it was an open question, you know, would people be able to do the kind of work and the kind of, would they be able to be vulnerable and open in the way that they need to be and dig deep knowing that they're being filmed and knowing that there is a wider audience. And, um, and it was delightful really to discover that it is, it, it was possible. Yeah. And there was real genuine work happening um, in this, in this uh, environment. I had, in addition to that, I mean, the surprise that it really worked um, but I had a few other kind of surprising moments. I mean, one I remember, I remember talking to you about it, mm -hmm. was that around something like the 12th week, I realized, oh my God, everyone is getting better. Hmm. Around Which doesn't week always 12. Happen. Well, you don't always start with your patients at the same starting right, point, right. so you don't mm -hmm. notice it. That's really but interesting. But there's something kind of magical that happens around like 12 weeks of work where suddenly everything you've done so far suddenly comes to fruition. So that was kind of yeah. shocking, like week 12, because I mean, when people do short-term treatment, there's often like 12-week modalities, and suddenly I was like, oh, there is something to the 12-week mark. That's really interesting. Um, and another, another thing that was surprising was how certain current events were kind of infiltrating people's process. Mm -hmm. um, 
like some of the work was done during the Kavanaugh hearings, mm. and suddenly everyone was talking about sexual trauma, both the women and then the men, so that was pretty intense. Yeah. Um, and then there was like the, the Trump ban on trans mm -hmm. in the military, which also suddenly showed up in the material. It was, all of this was like unpredictable. It wow. just happened yeah. outside in the world and yeah. it showed up in the material. So that was interesting. Mm. And it's the type of thing when you're rolling into work, you don't even know what's going to hit you. Right. You know, all different people. Same, same with you with yeah. these 20 weeks. You guys had no idea, which I think yeah. is scary in one part, but also just truly fascinating to see how it all shakes out. You know? Well, it's yeah. exciting. I mean, it really, there's a kind of faith in, in there's, there's this belief that if, if you're able to really find a way to observe and participate in what's really going on between people, I mean, this is true for documentary work in general, um, if you can capture what's really happening, it's going to be really interesting. Yeah. So you guys have mentioned some people that you saw some transformations for, and it's mm -hmm. working. For the people that it's not working for, they're going, they're just, they're running into a brick wall. What, what is not happening for them? What are they still struggling with? Are there general things you can kind of pick and see with those people? Well, the, the people that participated in this uh, docu-series, they actually all really made like all major, major changes. I mean, I, I'm not sure how that happened. I mean, mm -hmm. but, you know, but of course not everything gets resolved. So for each couple, there are things that worked and things that they will still need to work on probably forever. Mm -hmm. And just talk about it too, whether it's in therapy or out of ther therapy, it feels like communication just needs to be really high on that priority list. Right, really what you do in this kind of work, I mean, ultimately is you're not, I mean, the, the problems are the problems, but you're giving people kind of the tools mm -hmm. to sit with whatever problem comes up which is how to listen better, how to differentiate between a stance of, let's say, listening and talking, which people don't always know how to differentiate. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, not to be fearful of the truth, which is a big one for people. People often feel super protective either of their partner or of themselves, of being more honest and truthful, and they don't um, trust how resilient they actually are and how much better they are when they're dealing with the truth. It's amazing how much fear can drive things. You know, fear mm -hmm. of confronting the truth, fear of doing things. And yeah. once you eliminate fear from your life, how transformational that can be too. And yeah. I'm sure this really helped a lot of people too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think, I think people are gonna really take a lot from these stories. I think it's really gonna, um, it's gonna be relatable in a way that, that, that opens up conversations and, and helps people to reflect on parts of their own lives and relationships for sure. So when people yeah. jump in this week, watching with their couples, whether it's just them, whoever it is, what's, what's the big pitch for them to check it out? What's the most important thing you want people to take away from this? Well, people, first of all, are going to identify. I mean, there's mm -hmm. nothing about what anyone is going through, any of the couples that are going through, that you won't find in some way really relevant to your life. And if you really stick with it, I mean, some of it is difficult, but if you stick with the show throughout, and all the way to the end, um, you really will see transformation. And I think it's inspiring. I mean, I get inspired by patients I sit yeah. with every day. I mean, there's something about people's capacity to overcome their own limits and really grow that gives you a lot of hope and a lot of inspiration about how to live. That's exactly right. I mean, maybe this is also a statement about kind of where we are in our culture right sure. now. Like we, we are constantly inundated with stories of conflict and polarization, right? There's this sense that the kind of the dominant narrative is one of people, you know, backing up into their corners and digging in their heels mm -hmm. and kind of bracing for, for a fight. And this is a different story. This is a story of love and compassion and reconciliation. And I think there's something to be said for these kinds of stories now. They feel important. No question. Yes. Looking forward to checking it out. Orna, thank you very thank much. You. Josh, pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much. Couples Therapy, Friday, September 6th on Showtime. Check it out. For Orna and Josh, I'm DJ. See you next time. You're on the sit down.